Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to program one of our inputs known as the light level. Now the light level is built into the front side of your micro bit and is another type of input device. This is a sensor that is a mechanical device that transfers signals to a control instrument or output device. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and use the LED screen as our output device for this activity. A light sensor within the LED grid can detect the amount of ambient light or natural room light shining onto your microbit. To test the amount of ambient light, you need to use the light level command in the input drawer. This command reads the light level applied to the LED sensor area in a range from 0 to 255. A 0 value reading means the room is dark. A value of 255 is the brightest light. These will be using analog values in order to detect what our output device will do. Your light level program requires a conditional statement. Programmers use conditional statements when the outcome will be different based on a true, false, or yes, no condition. The directions in the table below will help you to modify your light level program so that if the microbit level reads greater than 128, your scrolling message appears on the LED grid. But if the light level reads 128 or less, then the animation will appear. You can program the statement using the greater and less than signs, similar to the way you use them in math class. The code blocks you need that use the symbols are located in the logic drawer. Let's think about the requirements for this program. What we want our program to do is run continuously. This means that the event handler that we need to use for this program is going to be a forever loop. This will constantly check the condition and evaluate and then adjust the output based on whether or not that condition is true or false. So the condition we're going to be using is if the light level is greater than 128. If that is a true statement and the value is greater than 128, then we're going to go ahead and scroll a message across the screen. However, if the statement is false, we're then going to use an else block in order to scroll an animation across our screen. Let's take a closer look at our test block on how we can use the emulator to test the light level. Here you'll notice that once you add the light level from your input drawer into your program, in the upper left hand corner you will see a circle appear that has a yellow and black shape. You can change or emulate the behavior of the ambient light or light sensor by pulling that shade down. The brighter the value, the brighter it is in the room, the darker the circle is, the darker it would be in the room. So you can use your emulator in order to test your conditions before downloading the program to your microbit. Now that we're ready to begin programming our light level, one of the first things we need to make sure we do is give our program a name. So you can see down at the bottom, I've gone ahead and called this program light level underscore and then my last name. You'll want to do the same thing for your program as well in order to locate it easily when we send it to our microbit. Now, based on our flow chart, the first thing we need to do is to create an event handler that's going to constantly check our condition. The event handler that we're going to be using for this is going to be our forever loop. So we'll remove that on start and we're going to keep our forever loop for this program. The next step is we need to go ahead and create a condition. So because we're using a condition, we're going to need to go to our logic drawer. Now, there's really only one condition for this program if the light level is greater than 128. If it is, then something should happen. If it's not, something else should happen. So even though we have one condition, there can still be two outcomes. So for that reason, we're going to be using our if then else block. So we're going to go ahead and drop that into our forever event handler. The next thing we need to look at doing is creating this condition here. So right now we have an if true, then something should happen. The condition we want is if the light level is greater than 128. So we're going to be comparing the light level to a specific value. In order to do that, we're going to go to our logic drawer and we're going to scroll down and we are going to find the less than sign. We're going to bring that in and drop that into our condition. Now for this, it's the input greater than. So we'll flip our less than sign and make it a greater than. And from here, we need to go ahead and put in our value for our first zero as well as the second. So the first zero is going to be the light level. We can find our light level under the input drawer and we'll scroll down. And once we see light level, we're going to drop that in. 
Now watch what happens to the emulator once the light level is inserted into your program. Once the light level is inserted, you will now see that you have the ability to adjust the values in the emulator. Now the value that we're gonna use to compare this is 128. So if our light level is greater than 128, we wanna be able to scroll a message. So my message for this is just gonna be using a show string and I'm gonna go ahead and add my last name into there. Now, once we go ahead and do that, anytime the value is greater than 128, we should see the text scroll across the screen. So if I pull that value down, you will see that anytime it's greater than 128, that text will just continuously scroll across the screen. But what's gonna happen if the value is less than 128 or equal to 128? That's where that else block comes in. So for our else block, what we're gonna need to do is add our animation. So for our animation, we're just gonna go down to that advanced drawer, just like we did in project 1.5, and we're gonna bring in an image. And I'm gonna bring in my scroll image. I'm gonna replace my variable with a big image. So with that big image, I'll insert it into the first part of the program. And then from there, I can go ahead and create the animation. I'm gonna go ahead and create a sailboat for this one. So we'll just go ahead and add our LEDs that we want to have turn on. And we're gonna leave that as an offset of one. And that should scroll across the screen anytime our value is 128 or less than. So again, we can check the emulator. We can go ahead and put this into full screen. And what we should be able to see here is if I adjust that and make it brighter, my text will scroll across the screen. And if we make it less than 128, once the text finishes scrolling, we'll now see the sailboat. So here is a way that you could use ambient light on your micro bit in order to get an output to do a specific task. Now, one of the other things we're gonna take a look at while we're in this program is creating a sensor value test. Now, this is a great way for you to add something to your program to be able to check the values of any of your sensors. Once we download this program to our micro bit, it's gonna be very difficult to actually know the numerical value of light in the room or the value for any sensor. So what we can do is just add this little sensor value test. Pretty easy to add, and it's very helpful once you start using the micro bit and testing it with different variables. In order to create that sensor value test, we're gonna to go to our input drawer and we're just gonna use an on A button press. Now with that on A button press, all we really want to know is what is the value of the light level. So we're gonna go to our basic drawer and we're gonna go ahead and use our show number. And with that show number, if I hit the A button, you're gonna see that once that's done scrolling, we would be able to see that zero appear on the screen. What we want to have happen here is we wanna know what the value of the light level is. So instead of having zero, we're just gonna put the light level. Now, one of the things I like to do is just add a nice little pause block in here, maybe for about one second, just enough time to go ahead and really see what that value is, especially when it's scrolling. I then also like to go ahead and add my clear screen in case it's a single digit number. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate that pause block for another second or 1000 milliseconds. So in this case, if I go ahead and hold down that A button, what we should see come up on that screen is the number 128. So you'll see the 128 will scroll across the screen, it'll clear the screen, and then we'll go ahead and see that sailboat. So anytime you're running this on a micro bit, we won't know what that value actually is, but if it changes in the room, and let's say it goes up to about 200, we can always test that by hitting the A button, let that text finish scrolling, and then we'll know what the value is in the room at that time. So it's a great way to test your sensors and know what those analog values really are in a real time situation. So there you go, very basic program, but another input that you've learned about on how you can program your micro bit to use inputs to control output devices.